and hello again, and welcome to the Safe Toddles Podcast. I'm Dr. Grace Ambrose-Zakin. I'm here with my co-host, Calvin Foster. Hey, Cal. Hey. Hey, everybody. It's another beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's so good to see you, even though I can't see you. And I'm so excited to, today about our guest today, and I totally forgot her name. <laughs> yeah. June Allison, June. and she is kicking off our month-long series of discussions with families. families I'm so excited about this podcast. The yeah. Bell Cane. We're so yeah. super excited because we've talked to a couple professionals. We've talked to some people who grew up blind, but really having the perspective of someone who has a son and your story is uniquely positioned to really be interesting for all of us and our listeners. And thank you so much, June. Welcome, welcome. Absolutely. I'm excited to be here and talk about how the belt cane has changed our son's life um, and the um, improvements that we have seen in his independence with walking. Well, and to begin, um, could you just sort of walk us through why you began the search for, I mean, you've had such an impact in your community by finding the belt cane online and you've really been a spearhead. So I'd love for you to give us a little bit of that story. Sure. Um, so our son has cortical visual impairment. And so he does have vision. Um, he just has different vision. And so he has issues with depth perception and he does not have any lower field of vision. So like he can't see at his feet. So he struggles with things like curbs and steps and anything that's um, like twigs on the ground and stuff like that. So he originally started walking with a walker. And so that kind of you what um served as a bumper for him. So it hit those things first. And so when he started walking more independently, um, we noticed that he was falling, he was tripping over things because he just didn't see them. Um, so I started looking into things and I saw where somebody had, I don't remember whether it was on Facebook or on um, TikTok, maybe um, somebody had shown the um, Safe Toddles site. And I was like, hmm, this seems like it's the perfect answer for Caden, for our son, um, because it's going to hit those things first. It's going to allow him to still have the use of his hands because he also has cerebral palsy. And so that's a huge thing for him. Like he needs to be able to catch himself if he falls. Um, and so I started looking into that and I was like, this could be the perfect solution for him. Um, I didn't know anybody that had one. I didn't know anybody that was currently using a Safe Toddles um, belt cane in our area. Um, Caden also has a lot of therapists. He has a physical therapist, an occupational therapist. He has a visual impairment teacher. Um, so I sh kind of showed it to all of them. They all kind of had been looking too for what to use now that he wasn't having that walker that was hitting things for him. Um, and we all kind of started looking together and agreed that this was going to be the best idea for him. Um, so then his teacher for the visually impaired, um, who is through um, the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, um, showed it to her higher up people at um, the state level. And they had never seen it before. They had never heard of it. They didn't know what it was. So it was kind of like we were teaching them. Um, they looked at the videos. They looked at the website. Um, and so we started the process to get one for Caden. And in that process, they were like, hey, there's some other kids in North Carolina that could probably benefit from this. And so we kind of spearheaded the ordering process for Caden. But in that also the process of getting the belt canes ordered for some other children in North Carolina who absolutely could benefit from the same thing. Um, which is huge because for them to not know that there was something like that out there for their child and then to see the independence that it could give their child with walking is, you know, huge, especially for toddlers. Like toddlers want to be on the move. They want to be going. They want to be running. And this gave them that independence. Um, so Caden got his belt cane. Um, for him, the issue is, especially with his depth perception, like he kind of sees more in 2D than in 3D. His eyes do not work together. Um, he also had double strabismus surgery um, last summer. It did not work. Um, his eyes, um, one turned in and one turned out. Um, they don't work in conjunction with each other. Um, 
so the best, you know, he is nonverbal, so he can't tell us what he's seeing, but based on the doctor's best guess, um, he sees in 2D, his depth perception is completely off. And so for him, um, if there is a color change on the ground, if there is a texture change on the ground, he doesn't understand whether the ground is still flat, whether there's a step, whether there's a change in elevation, whether it's a ramp. He has no idea. And so everything to him is a little scary with walking. Um, when he gets used to an area like in our home, he is more comfortable. So he knows his way around our house. He knows where the steps are. He knows where the flat areas are. But when we go out in public, he has no clue. So like if he is going from like the pavement of a parking lot to like where the gutter is to a curb, he thinks that where the concrete starts in the gutter, that that's where a step is. And so he just stops like he doesn't know what to do. So that's when we knew there was an issue and that we needed something. Right. <laughs> and because right. it's a different so, color, right? It's like a lighter color. The parking lot is like dark. Like and then the lighter grayish color of the concrete. Yeah. And the, the thing about mobility um, vision is the three things that you need one is the field so they has got the reduced field so that's challenging right. and then the second is that contrast sensitivity that you're talking about potentially that he just has a hard time seeing the difference in the colors or understanding that thing um you know it's often called depth perception um mm which is not neither here nor there what you call it, but that is that function of i'm just not clear on if you know because sometimes it is flat mm -hmm. and sometimes right. it isn't and when you get to that where you're not sure his response is such a natural response i'll just stop and if he's two now is that right he is so to for me i think we should all understand that it seems like a very mature response and yet when you learn a very very young kids making a self-selecting to, to 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 go or not to go based on what's the information they're getting it just it's like it's a basic response like we shouldn't think that we shouldn't discount these very little kids understanding of whether or not that they're self-selecting to stop mm -hmm. he has decided i'm going to stop and that is remarkable when you think about little kids, you know, who just want to go, go, go. And, you know, sighted kids uh, run into things, too, right, at 15 months. <laughs> That's my grandson. On the other hand, they are they get better and better and better at kind of deciding. Whereas if you didn't expect it and it happened or you don't have clear information, it seems like that's the better outcome, you know, that you decide to slow it down, get a hand, you know, pick a better option than just continuing to go. I mean, I just find it incredibly fascinating. And I think we should really give respect to those little ones who are helping. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's just fascinating. Can, you're, you're one of the first that we've talked to that had a belt came before they were two and a half, I think. So this is actually very fascinating to me because we we had this we did a podcast about the different ages and when you introduced the belt cane and how it could help prove the motor skills and the progression. But what you've you're you're kind of hitting the nail on him. Like we haven't had this a interview like this before, where it was somebody under the age of three that was being introduced to the belt cane. So I'm excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> It has definitely made a huge impact. And I was telling um, Grace that we completely forgot to bring it with us on our trip. We are on vacation in Florida and we forgot to pack his belt cane. However, it has been a completely educational experience for us that we forgot to pack it um, because I didn't realize how much he relied on it until we forgot to pack it. Mm -hmm. um, so we stopped yesterday in Montgomery, Alabama on our way down and we went to a museum and in front of the museum, they had painted the sidewalk black at the entrance to the museum. And so you had the regular concrete color of the sidewalk and then there was like this big black strip and he was running on the sidewalk while we were waiting to go in and he got to the black painted strip and like stopped immediately 
Whereas when he wears his belt cane in public, he just runs. Like he like knows that as long as it doesn't bump, that he can just keep going, you know? Like if it doesn't hit anything, he just keeps running. It's bumper cars, right? Bam, <laughs> bam, bam, bam. <laughs> and he taps it, like he bump, 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 sit. Like he loves it. Yeah. Um, but he stopped dead in his tracks at that black painted section. And he did it three or four times, even knowing that like the first time he went, got to it, like we said, there's, cause he'll say step, step. And we'll, you know, like, well, he doesn't say it clearly like that, but like he tries to say step and we're like, no, there's no step. It's flat. And he went over it three or four times and, and stopped like dead in his tracks. And so like knowing that had he had his belt cane on, he would have zoomed right over it, you know, and not paused at all. Um, and so I'm kicking myself that we forgot to pack it. And then we're staying in a condo and there is terracotta tile. And then there's like a decorative strip of tile. And then there's white tile. And every time he stops at that decorative strip of tile, because he thinks that it's a step change to the white tile. Mm. And we tell him, no, it's flat. Um, but he still keeps stopping at that color change in the tile. So, so he definitely already relies on the belt game, like 100%. That's so awesome. So did you have any, did he um, put up any kind of a fuss when you first introduced it? Uh, how did that go? He really didn't. Um, the first day that we put it on him, um, you know, we did it a little short time. Um, we put it on and we put it on in the house and let him walk around a little bit in our house. And then we went outside. And so we have a ramp um, going from our back deck into the, um, into the yard. And he walked around on the, um, on the deck a little bit and then zoomed right down the ramp with it on out into the yard. He walked all around the yard with it. Um, we practiced going around a stick in the yard. Like he just immediately, to, to wearing it. He liked tapping it on the, we have a concrete pad at the bottom of the ramp. He tapped it on the ramp. Um, it did take him a while to learn how to stand up with it on, but that was only because he has um, uh, leg braces. He has an AFO. And so that took a little bit of maneuvering, but I want to say it was like the second time that he fell down with it on. He was able to figure out how to stand up with his leg braces on and everything. Wow. Um, awesome. I mean, it's just beautiful. It just makes me, it makes me so joyful. <laughs> it's <inside. laughs> it is like, yes, like he can be a kid. Like it's just awesome. He does. <laughs> he does. Like, what other changes man. have you noticed? Go ahead, Cole. Well, I, I just like not now. We'll, we'll introduce him to baseball. We'll we'll introduce him all these other sports, and now he can. And next thing you know, he can be able to say, "Taught a duck can to do it all." And. <laughs> I'm just like, this is awesome. I love it. So. Does he wear it in your home at all or a little bit? Or um, So we have been trying it in the house with steps, um, which is uh, our, like my question for you guys. So okay. he is going, so he can, use, he has mastered going up one step with it. But beyond one step, he doesn't know what to do because it gets stuck on the next step. Like he doesn't know how to maneuver up more than one step with it yet. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. Like he knows how to get up one step with, right. but beyond that, he's not sure how to maneuver it up more than one step. Um, so that is what we are working on is him in steps and uh, physical therapy and stuff like that. Um, so we do use it with steps at home. Uh -huh. and which one do you use the shorter or the longer? We have tried both. So uh -huh. both of them. And which one works better either way or the same uh, on the, in the home with it? The shorter one works better, but it's still like he still hits into this next step. Do your steps right. have a little lip over each step? They do. Okay. So what I want to say is, first of all, it's the same as the black square that's flat. It's information. Right. But unfortunately, this information comes with a visible kind of a va balance challenge. <laughs> right. <laughs> Plus, he has, I guess, what you were describing is some challenges also with um, just holding things with his hands and using his arms and what have you. So that's a bit. But so 
that's the big question is everything I've learned, I've learned from a child using it. And my theory, which is all I can say it is at this point, is that given enough opportunity and experience, we could figure out a way, he will figure out a way to kind of use the information to figure out how to, just like each one step, how to make it happen. It'll be slower, perhaps in the beginning, a little less fluid because of it. But having the information will, again, pay off because he'll know it's, there's yet another one, there's yet another one. Now I'm at the landing. So okay, perfect. It, I would expect it to take a little longer to get that coordinated. On the other hand, having the opportunity to practice, and if he's not asking, that's the other big one is like, all of the videos I've seen, I haven't seen kids asking to take it off in order to then do it without it. Is he, is that he, I mean, he doesn't have a lot of language, but on the other hand, he'd, he'd be able to kind of communicate he's that. Sure that. Like if he's done and he wants it off, like he'll, like he'll point and tell us that he, you know, like, he, he gets his point across. He communicates yeah. whether it's with yeah. words or not. <laughs> so when does he usually want it off? Um, Like if he's done, I'm trying to think. Like if he wants to sit down and play and he knows that he wants to crawl like with and move his cars and stuff like that, he wants it off. Um... We were at a football game and we were going to be sitting down on the bleachers and he was done. Like he knew we weren't going to be walking. He wanted it off. Interesting. I love it. Yeah. Um, and thinking about steps, I didn't try it, but I need to, at our high school, we have steps that are wider. Like the, the tread part is wider. They're concrete. I need to try it there. Oh. Oh, so it's more like one step, one step. So, mm -hmm. so remember, I asked a, a very interesting question: Was is there a lip over her home steps? And, and she said is. yes. And that's a really difficult thing, even with a regular cane. Is okay. You have an extra ledge over a step. Um, you normally when you walk up a cane. So if this is my finger is the cane, um, mm -hmm. so I have my finger pointing down, and then. So and here's the step, and I have my other hand being the step. When you hit, the, when you normally hold your cane and you tap that tap here, and then you then step onto the next. It's going to be a challenge to get that belt cane to go vertical, but if if he can, and that might be a trick. Um, I have to try. I'll I'll try it out with the belt cane I have here. Um, and see if I can actually do it. Um, get it to go up. Ver as vertical as possible to go over that lip um and be able to hit each step gotcha. but i again I, I this is again like grace said this is a learning trial and error process like all right yeah. are we able to use our hips to push the king a, a shorter one maybe but yeah so but I'll, the thing is with a big guy you know he's a boy so he's got some you know He's not a little girl where the, the belt kind of shimmies up and down on him. Is that true? Like <laughs> it's in, it's, it's there, it's there. So I've had little girls like where they can get really close, but it's cause the belt kind of goes whoop. Well, he's really skinny. So, you know, the potentially if he were to get wearing the shorter one really close to it and if it kind of lifted up, but okay. the other thing is at that point, it, it may not, push out again like automatically release like that's what happens with the thumb it makes a pressure point so that it kind of tap tap taps against it so yeah i think you're you're on to something there although i would have to just agree that we're not 100 percent sure how kids will figure it out but we want to be there on the video as we do i okay. do think uh, yeah it's interesting and so then is there a way that he expresses in the same way that I want to wear it now? Like, is there anything that if you were to mention it, does he seem to like perk up? Like, are we going to put it on now? Or does he have any way to communicate um, so, that? Yeah. So when we're, um, when we are leaving the house, we have um, in his bedroom, we have um, command hooks and we have his, both of his canes on command hooks right by his bedroom door with the belt and we will say, we're getting ready to go. Do you want to, you know, let's take your belt and he'll grab it. 
And then when we, we put it in the car and we put it right at his feet in front of his car seat. And then when we're getting out, we're like, do you want your belt? And he's, and you know, he'll say, you know, yes. Like he'll nod yes. And so then he stands there and he's like, and he's ready. And we put, you know, he'll hold his hands up and we put his belt on and then he'll point and we'll, you know, put the cane part onto it. Um, so he's very excited and willing to put it on. And then we constantly have to remind him two hands because his um, cerebral palsy is right hemi. And so like it affects his right side. And so he'll hold onto his left side, but then it pulls it right side. And so we constantly remind him because he can hold on with his right hand. It's just a little bit harder. Um, so we constantly remind him, you know, two hands and he'll hold on with his two hands. And, but I mean, he is very excited and willing to put it on and, um, he is potty training. And so we take it off 800 times while we're in public to go potty. Um, but he is ready to put it right back on and, you know, get to move in right out the door. And we get lots of comments in public of, you know, Oh, how cute. And what is that? And so we get to explain to people. And I love when people ask questions. Um, I'm a special ed teacher. And so I am very pro education, like of, you know, please ask me about my son and his disabilities. Like I would love to educate you. Nice. Um, rather than you stare and right. you know, whisper, um, I would love to tell you. And so, um, especially little kids who will ask their parent or say something to their parent, and I hear you, and your parent's not going to allow you to ask me, like, I will answer the child. Um, and so, um, we have had lots of opportunities to answer questions um, about the belt cane and Wonderful. Well, I mean, what, I, what you sent me some videos of some of the early days and I noticed that he was stopping at the curb, which you had mentioned earlier. And, and you were like, yes, this is a change. He, and, uh, and then you sat in the, when you went to the big uh, box store, yes, that, that you were noticing that his uh, movement was better, faster. Like you definitely saw a change. Can you explain some of those? Yes. So when we would go to places to, you know, to the grocery store or to the hardware store where there were changes in the floor or even like the line, like the silver line in the concrete where the, I don't know, like where they put the two pieces. Expansion joint, right? Yes. Yes, Thank you. The expansion joint in the concrete. Um, Like he would stop or he would trip over it when there's really nothing there to trip over, but he would see that there was a difference. Um, he would be very haughty in his walking and stuff like that. And the belt cane has just allowed him to just go. Um, and so we visit the hardware store a lot. Our house was built in like 1890 something. Um, and so we, <laughs> the ultimate remodel, like constantly we were doing something. And so he just zooms around and used to like, you know, like there's always boxes of stuff sitting in the aisles or stuff always. And so now he just, he used to just walk into them or he would be confused by all of the stuff out in the aisles. And now he's able to go around them. He likes to hit his cane off of all of the, you know, metal cabinet things that are at the hardware store, how all of their shelving is metal. He likes the sound that his cane makes when it hits the metal shelves. And um, I think that's the coolest thing ever. I think oh, yeah. it's great. That is awesome. I mean, yeah. personally, like that, that is true. A true boy, like it is. Of again. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> well, yeah. I think it's a true kid who has sensory impairment mm-hmm. because I've seen it in little girls too. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I'm just saying, like they're like, all right, what's this? And it's not a stim, like yeah. see yeah. so much. It's a, it's much more like, okay, what's that? And then you can kill them. You know, let's keep going. They will. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, instead of like waiting for him, <laughs> like yeah. seeing him wow. in the aisles at the stores. Yeah. Well, and I think that's so cool because as you, like I can, I can visualize like, oh, being, being a little kid and just running down the hall and, like, or down the aisles and then like, oh, I hit a box. What is this? Let's feel that. Let's feel that. Oh, it's cardboard or it, it's wood. I'm like, oh, I got a splinter. Oh, I better take that out. Uh, and, and you just experience life like, oh, okay, that that hurt, but maybe I don't know. Maybe I do that and go to the next step. And I mean, I, I, that's just, I love it. I love it. This is this is why I love the belt cane. Could <laughs> the kids get to experience that? They get to experience being a kid. They don't, and they get to be a kid. And build, yeah. build the world around them through the belt cane rather than 
having to stem on themselves or whatever, or just sitting there in a corner and just waiting for the next person to come and grab them or whatever. I just love it. I just love it. <laughs> well, I was curious. Yeah, uh, you said that you have to catch up to him rather than having to bring him along, which I love. But the other thing that we have to kind of recalibrate, and maybe you, this it would remind you of something. But when I first saw, I was I was always like, oh, the pushback, you know, like, and as a sighted person, of course we wouldn't like that. <laughs> but you can imagine. I mean. You gotta gotta get used to that visual, right? Of the the con the pain contacting something at a pace now that's quite good, and that looks a little different than when if it would be their body and they're going slower, right? I mean, it's a it's a different look to moving through the world. Would you agree? I agree, a hundred percent. Did Me? it take you a little while to get used to? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I I did. And it's funny in public because, you know, you get differing opinions from the public when they see him. Like, um, they don't know what it is at first that he's using or doing. And um, and so they're like, you know, when he hits something, they're like, oh, is he okay? I'm like, he's fine. Like, he knows how to handle himself. He's okay. Um, plus, he's the sixth kid. So it's kind of like survival of the fittest at this point. <laughs> he's, gonna be fine. <laughs> like, he's fine. If he's not bleeding or broken, you know, he's fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so he just, you know, he doesn't fall. Like he bumps into it, and he has good enough, you know, hold on the cane, and he can, you know, balance himself. And like he bumps into it, but doesn't fall. Like he understands, like the recourse in his hands and everything that he hits something, and he thinks it's funny most of the time. To be <laughs> honest, right? He hits stuff even at a high speed, and you know. <laughs> that oh. through his hands and then he like moves around it or continues to hit it depending on yeah. <laughs> he's a redhead i mean you were saying something and i, and I, I would like to dive in a little bit more um sure. especially those that are and i think this would really help home for those that are um teachers that are visually impaired or own own and mobility instructors that are um helping they probably have th this one student that they never had before never had never had the experience with like epilepsy or not epilepsy so with it with it is it cerebral palsy or is it epilepsy? He has cerebral palsy, he also does have epilepsy but he does have cerebral palsy <laughs> okay so um with that and then introducing the belt cane and so you, you were saying all right so he's um weaker on one side and strong on the other and putting both hands on the cane like so is that is that helping him balance is that helping him kind of feel the cane better or just helping him what is that doing so that way those that are going to be that are possibly working with the, with another kid like this um they could then be able to use a, a similar technique. So I think for Caden, um, one of the things we have always wanted to, he does have the use of his right hand. Mm -hmm. It's just weaker. And so for him, we all have always encouraged him to use his hand as much as possible. Um, we constantly, like if he is using his left hand to play with toys, we will say, hey, put it in your other hand or use your other hand just to remind him that that hand is there. Because if he starts to really concentrate on something, we will notice that his right hand gets fisted really tightly. Mm -hmm. And so we want to, especially at this age, remind him consistently throughout the day to use his right hand as much as possible. And so with the belt cane reminding him to use both hands, one, it helps it keep it in alignment in front of his body. Even though it's not always consistently straight in front of his body, because his left arm still does pull it a little more than the right arm just because it's stronger um but it reminds him to use his right arm first of all but then it also helps him to get that feedback through both arms and both sides of his body so when it hits he gets that feedback through both sides of his body consistently so he feels that bump through both arms and talking to his therapist for him to gain fine motor skills in his arm, we have to work on his shoulders. And so like that grip and the holding and the getting that feedback is going to help build his shoulders 
and the strength in his arm, which eventually will help improve fine motor in his right hand. Um, so it's just a lot, you know, like we want to constantly use his right hand, even though it's harder for him. And, you know, it will, you know, always be his weaker side, but we want it to be the full potential that it can be, even if it's going to be weaker. So we constantly, as a family, all of his sisters always say, put it in your other hand or use your other hand or, you know, switch hands just to try to remember to remind him that, Hey, that hand's still over there and we need to use it as much as possible. So we constantly remind him to use both hands. Um, and so we do the same thing with the belt. Um, and it's just a reminder for him, you know, use both hands. That way he gets the feedback and he's, you know, using it for muscle tone, for strength, for, um, he has um, reduced sensation on his right hand too. And so just that feel, I love the, um, how the, it's textured, the 3D printing side, of, it's not super smooth. And so that texture part also, I think helps with the, the handle. handle part. Um, helps him get that little bit of texture within his palm too. So that's awesome. good job on the design. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that that's what also, I mean, kudos to Grace for developing this cane that really stimulates the mind, the tactile, mm -hmm. all the different parts to the cane. So that way, anytime you touch the cane, you're experiencing something and then it becomes that muscle memory and you build that strength yeah. and that, that, reassurance like it's there like i can i can rely on that feeling to give me safety or give me that ability to move forward or do whatever and i think that's what's just so beautiful about it um i i, I can't i wish i was an infant and that way i could run run around like a mad dog with this thing i mean i i i just i'm like man like this would be so much fun like i could just run around like a mad dog and and not have to do anything besides run. Uh. <laughs> I, uh, you know, we're talking a little bit about design. And, of course, it's a Safe Toddles team effort um, that I, you know, Mohammed Falarad and Marlon Bixen and, uh, you know, just had a wonderful group of folks help us. Are there any design things that come to mind? Like if only it did this or that or things to think about for the future that come to mind when you're using it? anything um he's a boy so it gets dirty um <laughs> it gets in the little so while the texture is great it collects it's dirty <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, I love I'm it. to think. not that i can think of um we did have to send his belt back at the beginning um we got it speedy. So it wasn't like it took you guys a while to get it to us, but he, um, he has always had a hard time gaining weight. That's just part of who he is as a kid. Um, when we fostered and adopted him, he started out with a feeding tube and he has always struggled with eating. Um, he has some sensory issues, um, with feeding and doesn't really like a lot of foods. Um, but he had a minor, growth spurt and weight gain between the time that we ordered and the time that we got it. And so we had to switch out the belts. Um, I don't know if there's a way to make them adjustable, but I really like how sturdy they are. So I don't know if that's a potential option down the road. Um, but you guys were amazing with switching it out for the size that he needed. So that wasn't an issue at all. Like that one came super fast. Um, so no, not that I can think of. Um, I, uh, yeah, go ahead. Fun fact, so I have a defibrillator because I had cardiac arrest uh, five years ago, um, and I discovered that the magnet on the belt cane will um, set off my defibrillator. I didn't know that ahead of time. I was carrying it out to the car. I'm going to have to like, write that down as a warning. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on our warning labels. <laughs> put the disclaimer that if you have a pacemaker or defibrillator, you should not carry the belt cane part on your shoulder <laughs> when you're I am to, writing it down for your child <laughs> which oh is it turns right back on when you take the magnet away oh good <laughs> oh lord but now he actually has a magnet on his car seat that holds the buckles out of the way you know they have those now on car seats because they're fancy yeah and i had reached over to grab something on the other side of his car seat and it set it off too so it's Silly things now that have super duty magnets on them that you don't, right. don't even think about. 
like apparently phones now, like the 12 iPhone 12 has a crazy magnet in it or something. I don't know. Oh, wow. I know. It's fine. So my curiosity and everyone wants to know what is the plan now? Um, would you want to get the next size and keep them using it? Have you talked about wearing it in preschool, um, working on having him hold it? I mean, where do you see this in the next year, two years, five years um, down the road? From well, these sound like IEP vision questions. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's where they're coming from. Yes. I know. Um, so we actually haven't talked about it as a team, like with all of his therapists. However, I think that for now, the belt cane is his best bet for right now. Um, he is starting preschool in the school setting um, in January when he turns three in December. So he will start in pre-K um, like the first day of January after school break. Um, not that that's a predetermined um, thing, but he will. Um, <laughs> so um, I think that the belt cane for him is going to be the best option to allow him to still be able to use his hands. Like if he's going to be in the school setting, like he's going to need to carry things. And as long as the belt cane is an option that fits him, um, I think that that's the best thing for him. Um, so as long as you guys have a belt that fits him and a belt cane that fits him. We go up to 9LL and I don't think he's anywhere close to that. So, <laughs> so that is what we will use. Um, and then I guess as he gets older, um, we will transition to a cane. But um, yes, as long as he can use the belt cane and give him the use of both of those hands. Um, like we were just talking, I was just talking to his therapist the other day about his physical therapist about like, what are some of the things like goals for school that he's going to need to like, like carrying a lunch tray. And I was like, oh dear, like that requires both hands. Like, okay. Um, so things like that, that the safe toddles belt cane would allow him to be able to do and have youth, use of both hands um, is going to be amazing for his independence and in school. Um, or does people. he use it during the other therapies now? In the he does. Use it? Um, yeah. Nice. So he has um, um, occupational therapy, takes him outside to play and he uses it. Um, he has orientation and mobility. He has, um, he takes it with him when he goes to speech because he does speech um, at a, not at our home. He does it outside of our home. Um, and so he uses it um, to maneuver there. Um, so does he use it most of the day? Um, he does. He does use it so most fabulous. of the day. You're making so Rich Bay happy. Because, uh, this is, this is the I don't know if you can tell. I did. He's in the background turning on TikTok right now. <laughs> well, ho hopefully he, he'll find my... Uh... Would he like to be on camera and give a wave and a shout? Kaden. <laughs> oh, you took TikTok away. Can you say hi? Do you, you want to? You want to actually meet the deafblind Potter? <laughs> Hi. Hey there, you buddy. <laughs> How you nice doing, to, buddy? We talking all about you. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to use the little vision I got to see your beautiful face. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? You having fun on vacation. It's so good to see you, man. <laughs> I'm to go to the beach. Go awesome. We're gonna go to the well, beach. We won't keep your mom very long, much longer. <laughs> well, make, make sure you catch a couple waves and do some hang ten for me, man. <laughs> Love it. He's ridiculous. <laughs> well, that's what you're supposed to be at too. Spoiled. Spoiled. Good. Good. Wonderful. That's awesome. Mother of seven. You are amazing. I just can't say enough how, what a pleasure it's been to get your insights and learn so from you. And Well, thank you, June. So that, that wraps us up for the Safe Toddles podcast. Um, if you want to get a hold of us, we're at, you can email us at info at safetoddles.org. If you'd like to go to our website, go to safetoddles.org. If you'd like to find us on social media, you can find us on any social media platform you like, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook and Instagram, and you can find us there at Big Toddles. You guys have a good one, and go have a great Monday. Thank you guys. Thanks. Thank you, Jim.
The content of this episode was brought to you by Safe Toddles. Safe Toddles, our mission is to provide toddlers and preschool learners who are blind with a solution for walking safely. A pediatric bell cane for clear path detection.